Hello, John Dersick here with the Howe Department of Transportation in the Office of CAD and Mapping Services, and this video is going to go over the Item Master add-in for Excel. Now, in the previous video, you saw an overview of the process to generate a general summary sheet semi-automatically, where it's extracting data from some summary sheets, and then from there, being able to populate a general summary sheet. So, these sub-summary sheets need to be set up so that the data can be extracted from them, which is what the following videos will will go over. But these subsummary sheets use the the item master add-in to um, get the item master data, and that's why I want to go through how that works, and then the item master add-in itself and all the features. So I'm going to open up a subsummary file. So that is in our standards, O dot file folder, Gensum folder, there's a standards Excel summaries. So these are the ones that are set up to to work with the Gensum file to extract data. So I just opened one of them. So I have the item master already installed. If you notice that there's an O dot tab. Um, so to install that, if I go back to folder structure for our standards, if I go to add ins inside that Gensum folder, there is the add in file. That that is the add in that will be installed. And then there are some script files here as well. So the script files, there's one to install and uninstall, and then one to update, which I'll get over the update one later. Uh, I just wanted to mention this is set up for 2013 only, just as the name says it does. And the reason being is there's the way Excel handles add-ins for different versions is they're in different folders in your registry. So um, if your office is using a different version, there is a manual process that I, I go through that's step-by-step -step easily that steps you through how to install it. Um, I, if you're looking to update these script files to work, I could poss possibly help you set those up for different years of Excel or versions of Excel. So I've already installed it, but there's how, how you install it. So then you can come to ODOT and the help will open up this document. And this document is very detailed. It goes through everything, every detail. But there's uh, steps on how to install using the script. Here's the steps for manual installation. And so this document, if you can't get to it through the adding because you can't install it, um, in our standards inside the Gensum, there's documentation folder and so item master add-in PDF. That is that's what's being opened here. So this is always a good point of reference if you have some questions about the add-in. So I'm going to start by telling you how this interacts with the sub-summary sheets. So on the general summary sheet, we should all know, hopefully by now, that in the general summary file, there is a copy of the Item Master for 2013 and a copy for Item Master 2016. And all the formulas hit one of those copies of the item master. And there is a video out there that goes over how to switch between spec years. It's basically right here. You just, you just use that pull down. But that's besides the point. So for this general summary sheet, the item master data is actually inside the file. And then you would just need to update that copy with what's out there on the web using that button right there. For the sub summaries, I took a slightly different approach. And the reason being is I didn't want to put a copy of the item master in every single sub summary sheet. I mean, think about how many sub summaries you're going to have for one project and compare that to all your projects. It's going to be a lot to maintain because just like in the general summary file, we have to update the copies inside the file. I wouldn't want you to have to update every single sub-summary file. So 
instead of putting the item master data inside the subsummary file, they all will link to the item master add-in. So inside the item master add-in, there is a copy of the 2013 item master and 2016 item master. So this way you'd only have to update the add-in and not every single subsummary sheet, which I think is a way better approach to this. That's why I went that way. So the linking is done through two named ranges and all the formulas use those named ranges. And so you can see named ranges from the formulas tab, name manager. And so there are the two. Basically, it's just linking to the add-in file, which it says right there, and then this a specific worksheet in the add-in that contains the item master data. So, um, real quick, this worksheet query item add-in two is the worksheet that contains 2016 item master data, and the one without the two, just query item add-in contains the item master data for 2013. So this is a real easy way to tell which item master your subsummary sheet is referencing. So if you see a 2, that means it's referencing 2016. If it's not a 2, then you're referencing 2013. And so um, you don't have to go in and, and fix these. I'll go over how you can switch spec years for subsummaries here in a second. But just want to make sure everyone understands how this stuff is interacting so you're not um, confused or, or wrong about how this is working. It's very simple. It's just a link to that and that's all it is. Nothing nothing big or complicated, anything like that. So, so in the add-in file is a search item master, which you guys have seen this. This is the same exact code that's in the gensum file. Um, and an update to this that you'll see both in the gensum file and in the add-in is it will now tell you up here the spec year and the last refresh time so now you know what you're you're um, using or looking at I guess so I think that's a, a pretty nice enhancement for you guys so you'll see that with this April 2016 CAD update so I'm not going to go through this one because this is pretty much the same as what you guys have seen just that slight add that slight feature right there so I won't go through that. So the next button is refresh add-in. And so the refresh add-in will basically do what you think it does is it refreshes the copy of the add-in or of the item master that's in the add-in file. So it goes out to the website and gets the current version of the item master and updates it for the add-in file. Now the the catch here is that this is not a permanent refresh. It's only refreshing for your active session of Excel. And the reason being is that this add-in file right here, this add-in, oh, that's, let me look at the right location here. Sorry. So this add-in file is read-only. And it's read-only on purpose because everyone is going, in your office, is going to hit this same location, this same file, and they're going to load this same add-in. And so when that happens, well, the first person that would get into it would have access. Everyone else would have read-only access. So I made it read-only so that nobody gets access to it because, A, when we have updates, it's a lot easier to get that update out there if no one has access to it. And, B, if it wasn't read-only, then you would have the false illusion that when you hit the refresh add-in that you actually did update the file but someone else probably had access to it or they'd be the only ones that could do that so I just didn't want to go down that road I think it'd make it more complicated so it's read-only it's on purpose read-only so this is only going to re refresh the file for your active session because you can't change that add-in file you can't update it. it's read-only so I hope that makes sense to everyone. So this will only update it for your active session, which is fine. I mean, that's I don't think that's a big deal that you can just hit that and it'll take like 20 some seconds and then all all the item master will be refreshed. Now I do have 
ways to do permanent um, refreshes of the item master for the add-in and that is described in that document, that PDF document, update options here in the bookmarks and I go through a way you can set up a nightly task through a script that can run and here's the source code it goes through all that um, the main part is this location could be different that's why it's in red point it out to you guys. Um, but I view that more of a CAD manager role, so I don't think everyone watching this video will need to worry about this. But there is a script file already there. That's update. And so that'll go through all the process. And I have one set up for Central Office here that runs at like 4 a.m. and updates the item master data. So that's an option for you. So, I hope everyone's clear on that. If you have more questions, please feel free to email me, contact me, call me, because I want to make sure everyone understands that. So, next, moving on to uh, info. Basically, we'll just tell you what your current spec year in use is and the last time that was refreshed. So, that's telling me it's 2013. So, that means that's my active spec year for this add-in file. So when I use the search item master, it's using 2013. I can switch that in the preferences, which I'll go over that when I get there in a couple minutes here. So the fixed links and auto fixed links, these two buttons are solely for the sub summary files. So I mentioned those named ranges, which those are what create the link to the add-in file. Those aren't likely to break, but if for some reason they did, you can use this to fix those links. But the, I think the main use of this is to set up what spec year you want those sub summary files to use. So when I hit the fix links button, I can go and I can add all the files that I would want to fix links. So I'll just select one, but you can select multiple. You can go and add more at a later time if you wanted to. So anything that's listed in this box, when I hit fix links, the links will be fixed. So in that link you can select what you want it to link to. So uh, use active spec year will just whatever your active spec year which is you know I mentioned that in the info and you can set it in your preferences when I get there or you can specifically select spec year. So if, if my active spec year is 2013 and I select 2013 this toggle, I would do the same thing as if I selected use active. It's just it's just set there by default. If you don't if you know what your active spec is, you don't have to worry about making another click. So I'll select 2016 and uh, the select location you can go and tell it to your sub summary sheet to link to maybe you downloaded a copy of the item master and you want it to link to that you can do that and that's what this option gives you the ability to do and that three little dots will be enabled and you can go and select that location and then select a worksheet inside that excel file to link to so I don't foresee too many people using that option but so I'll select 2016 and hit fix links and just like that it went through and updated those named ranges here and they're linking to the 2016 so it's real simple real easy so um, one thing to mention now is you saw that in the info uh, my current spec year is 2013 but my sub summary sheet which I, is this one I have open that's when I hit fixed links on is referencing 2016 so you can have that mismatch where your sub summary file is using 2016 specs and maybe your add-in file is using 2013. That can happen, I want to point that out, but um, that's I think the best way to go. That way you can easily assign a spec year to a file and that's why I chose that approach. So you don't have to worry about what your add-in is. So your add-in won't change what your sub summary file is using. So, that's the fixed links. The auto fix links is basically does the same thing, but does it automatically. And so it's a toggle button. So if it's toggled on, 
it's going to automatically fix the links. And what that means is anytime you open a file with this, an Excel file with this toggled on, it's going to automatically check that file to see if it can fix those links. That's all it's doing. So it does it automatically. So with this toggled on, if I open an Excel file, it's going to automatically check it and try to fix the links. And you can set up in the preferences, which I'll go over in a second, what it's going to link to, just like you had that option here with the automated way you don't really get that dialog so you can set it up in your preferences what it's going to link to so uh, fix links is highly useful fun, especially if you need to switch spec gears f for your sub summary sheets so now the like, combined data is on an estimating tab this is really for estimating at central office so you guys don't need to really use it I'm not going to go over it um, basically it's used to combine uh, data sheets together. So now that brings us to the preferences, the last thing on this add-in. I'm sure we'll have more buttons as time goes on for more things, but this is where we're at right now. So if I hit the preferences, you can see that I have a bunch of options. So the first thing I want to go over is the active spec year. So it's on 2013, so you know that's what's telling this add in what spec you to use. So that's when I hit the search item master was using 2013. So if I wanted the add in to use 2016, I would select that. And so it does not go into, if I hit cancel, it's not going to go into effect. I have to hit apply. When I hit apply, it added a value to your user registry to store that. So if I close out Excel, next time I open it, it's going to know. To automatically use 2016 spec year by default so it's kind of nice you don't have to after you set it you, it's just going to remember that you don't have to come back to it every time you open Excel it's just the first time you have to set it so you know that's how you can set the active spec year so now if I open search item master you'll see it'll say 2016 so now I'm using 2016 item master as well as if I go to the info you'll see it's using that 2016 as well as if I go to fix links, to use active spec years now it's going to use 2016 because that's my active spec year. So pretty simple. Hope it makes sense. So going back to the preferences, the default select location. So that's where I was mentioning in the fix links button you can set a location to link to. You know if I toggle that on I can go and select it. If I set a default location in my preferences using this I can use this button I can go out and I can select I'm not going to select one but it would fill out that location in this big area right here and so when I hit apply it's going to remember that it's going to save that it's going to add it to your user registry so next time you come back it, it knows it so with that set if I come back to my fixed links and I click this it's already going to have, if I hover over here, it'll, I don't have anything set, but it'll give you a little pop-up saying what it, what you have selected by default. It's going to use your default location. So if you maybe had something that you know you're going to link to all the time, you know, you would put it in your default select location. That way when you select this toggle, it's already set. Um, so I think that's pretty self-explanatory. So the next option is enable auto fix links on open. So what it, what this does is it'll again save it to your registry so it'll remember that next time you come into it. But what this does will, when you open Excel for the first time, it's going to go check that registry value to see if you have this checked on. If you do, then it's automatically going to toggle that auto fix links button on. So you notice that I just had it, I checked it on and hit apply. It didn't actually toggle it on. So what this is, is it's only for the first time you open Excel. After that, it's going to use whatever you currently have set, which would make sense. So if I open it up and I had that uh, preference you know, toggled on, the first time I open it, this would be toggled. But maybe I was like, oh, for right now, I don't want that on. So I'll turn it off. So it's going to use your active setting rather than you know defaulting back to this. It's just the first time you open to get that setting, which is how I think most people would want that set. So again, it's not something you have to use. It's just there as a feature. 
So now the last two options is the default for fix links button and auto fix links. So in that fix links, I can set a default which one of these four I want it to default to every time I open it. So say I know I want to default to 2016. I can do that. So now if I go, it's defaulting me to 2016 right there. So pretty self-explanatory. If you wanted to use Active Spec here, that basically will use whatever you set here. And then there's also select location. And so the select location you need to have this defined because the auto fix links you don't get a dialog comes up. So basically you're saying automatically fix my link to whatever my default location is. So you need something set there for this to work. That I mean I'm, that makes perfect sense. You can't really automatically fix something if you don't know what you're fixing to. But I don't foresee that one being used so much. So again, that's going to save that to your user registry, and then it's it's going to remember it the next time you open it, so you don't have to. Basically, you come in here, you can set it one time. Most of, most of you probably will just want to default 2016 because most of your projects from now on are probably going to be using 2016 specs. So something like that, hit apply, and then you really don't have to, to worry about it so much. So. I hope that makes sense to everyone. Again, if you guys have questions, please feel free to contact me. I, w I don't want anyone to be confused. I think this is very simple. It's just a link. That's all it is. So in the next videos, I'm going to go over some of the sub-summary sheets and how they fill, that, fill it out and how they work. Um, but even if you aren't using these sub-summary sheets, this add-in could still be viable for you guys because now you don't have to open the sub sheet to get to this. It's just opening any Excel, you're going to get this add-in to get to here. So I think it'll be useful for you guys. So I'll uh, see you guys in the next video.